I don't usually do this, but I backed a project on Kickstarter. We're going to talk about that today. So sometime back, I had been on Kickstarter, and something about this mouse caught my attention. It's called the Lexus, I'm sorry, the Lexip. Uh, it's not a Lexus. That would be very interesting. Um, not sure that I'd buy it anyway, but still. Uh, Alexa PU94 Gaming Mouse, <clears throat> as they titled it. Um, the idea is that you have this mouse that can rotate on the axis itself, uh, like a 3D um, architect's drafting mouse, which I could see a use for that. Uh, you get the joystick on it, and then the, the whole thing is supposed to be programmable. So I was like, you know, that could be really interesting, especially like a, in a flight simulator or possibly an MMO. Um, and when you backed early, you got the, the free um, mouse pad that came along with it. So we're going to take a look at what this is first. We'll unbox it and um, show you how to set up the control panel. Uh, show you how to set up the control panel. And I uh, will give you my thoughts on this thing as to whether this is something that you should consider or if it's just an overpriced paperweight. So when you place the order, this is what shows up on the mouse itself and the mouse pad. First, we're gonna go ahead and open up the mouse. So it's nicely packaged. I'm gonna have to uh, agree with that or state that. It's really actually rather simple to open. Um, and there's not much to it. I mean, you have your mouse and that's about it. Okay, so as far as the mouse goes, the idea is that you're supposed to be able to take this item and it's got a swivel or a base here and it rotates forward and back, side to side. So I could see this being very useful in a flight simulator situation, um, drafting, uh, architecture, that type of stuff. The, then you've got your joystick on the side which does not de does not uh, press in, but still, you've got the full range of motion there. You've got a forward back button that you can program. Another programmable button, obviously your right and left clicks, as well as your scroll wheel and the scroll wheel click. So, I mean, lots of options for programming and it does feel nice right off the bat. We're gonna move that aside for a second. We're gonna take a look at what else comes with it. So. You've also got the um, mouse pad, if you will, that is uh, very simple, a very smooth surface, packaged nicely, and uh, no, not, not much to it. I'm going to show you how this thing works as well here. Okay, starting here with the, with the mouse, mouse pad. Um, it's pretty simple. All it is is just a glide surface. You know, it's nothing special. It's not uh, got programmable RGB. It doesn't charge a wireless mouse or anything like that, but it, it is a nice surface. Uh, to change the RGB, you simply press the little fingerprint button, if you will, here, and it gives you different colors. Um, you know, you just kind of cycle through here, which are very nice. I mean, it illuminates nicely if you want that. It gives you a couple different uh, cycles as well as if you want to have something a little bit more flowy or choppy or whatever you want to call it, or you can turn it off altogether. Uh, that's all the mouse pad is. It's, uh, like I said, pretty simple. So I'm going to go ahead and put it to something here and we'll leave it that for the uh, purpose of the video. Uh, the uh, mouse itself is also RGB. We'll get into <clears throat> what uh, or how you program it and what all that means. Uh, comment on the of the glide surface itself. It is smooth. The only thing I don't like is there are there is a tendency, as you can see, for the cord to get caught on the edges. I would have liked to have seen these uh, camfered a little bit so that there was a slope so that if you slid it, it would simply glide up the edge as opposed to just hit this very noticeable edge that now is more of a snag and can be frustrating, especially if you're doing something that's real touch sensitive and you you hit that and, and maybe it causes your mouse to 
as you can see, if the head kind of grabs it and drags it backwards. So um, that's a little frustrating, uh, annoying at the best. So I'm going to, for the purpose of this, go ahead and leave that on there today, but uh, I would probably not use this uh, just based upon that alone. Um, it's more annoying than anything. The mouse does feel very smooth. The bottom have these ceramic feet that make it very smooth to whatever surface you have it on, whether it's something like this or even a standard gaming pad, mouse pad. I mean, it feels nice. It's very frictionless, shall we say. Um, so I do like that. I like how the mouse feels in my hand. I, again, I prefer larger mice. I prefer something that I can actually grab a hold of and feel like it's got substance. The weight is nice. Uh, it's not as heavy as the mice I prefer, but still, again, it does work. And on this pad or a good surface, you get, definitely got control over the full 3D movement of the mouse. And they say it, they call it having two joysticks. So basically the joystick in your hand and then the joystick on the side. So very simple. Okay, so here we are at the Luxip.us website. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, um, as always. Brings you right into the screen. They say they're gonna change the rules, which, you know, to, that, to them, that means that uh, it's a pretty big deal if you're gonna spend 129.90 uh, US dollars on a uh, mouse because it's got two joysticks. Um, it's not cheap. And mind you, that's just for the mouse. If you would like to get additional ceramic feet, they've got a cost. I've not had a need to do that. And if you want the mouse pad uh, that I have here, uh, it's an additional $40. I'm going to tell you straight out, the mouse pad is not worth $40. Don't buy it. it I'm sorry. It just straight up isn't worth it. Uh, frankly, if anything here, I, even just starting to do this video, I'm about ready to put it off the side as it is because it's driving me nuts catching on the, actually, you know what, that's what I'm gonna do. I, I just can't handle it. It's constantly getting caught on the top of that edge. Um, and it feels nice enough on my gaming pad here that I don't need that. Um, first thing you do need though, is you need the control panel. So go ahead. Save that, I've already got downloaded, but that's what you're gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna bring you back to the beginning here so you can kind of see a little bit more if you want to get into the website. Um, I mean, it, it's a nice, clean site. Uh, nothing exciting, you know, they're gonna make the claims of it's absolutely pre precise and lightning fast. The PU94 gaming mouse kicks the door open to a brand new way of gaming which I will agree that the concept is really nice of having the joystick for the left and right, uh, forward, back, I mean, it's a full motion. So again, I can su see some uh, uses for this, uh, some use case scenarios, but um, we're gonna get into a couple things here that are pretty big drawbacks, and uh, in my opinion. Uh, but we're gonna, I suppose, let's get the, the uh, control panel installed first. So go ahead and uh, I've already got that saved here to my download. So get that installed. Which is very straightforward. We'll come back to this in just a moment. Okay, it's finishing, uh, it's finished installing. One thing that's kind of uh, surprising is that it doesn't just have give you an auto run option. It just says finished, and now you have to go into your uh, start menu and actually open it up, which I guess isn't the most difficult. Right off the bat, this is a very simple interface. You can see it's asking, or it states what the DPI setting is at right now. You can go anywhere from 150 all the way up to 12,000, which is insane, I don't, like my mice around there. So I'm gonna put this down to that 2000 range, I suppose, which I suppose you can just click in here and put it. All right, so now I've got the DPI, approximately what I like to use for just daily use. Um, before we get into options, we're gonna go ahead and go, get into the lighting section. And it's, you know, it's simple, it, it works. You just got your option of no color, one color, or two colors, or a rainbow effect. 
I'm going to go ahead and pick a rainbow puke because why not? That's what everybody, or I shouldn't say everybody, that's what a lot of people like to use. Make it nice and bright. I have apply, speed. You know, you can alter that from anywhere to from really fast, which is nuts, to really slow. Give you some nice close ups here in a second. You can, you know, apply a gradient. You know, there's, I mean, it's it's decent. You can change to how you want to um, your lighting to be if you want. If you turn on uh, Internet Explorer, it can have one effect. Chrome, another. You know, if you have a game that you want to turn on, like League of Legends or Sims or whatever it is, any program you want, you can go from this or you can add a program. That's what this is for here if you want to select something individual. We're going to go back to the options page and this is where you play around with the mouse settings and, and you get it to how you want. Right off the bat it gives you your right click, your left click, which you know they, they do work. I will tell you that they don't seem to recognize every click all the time and I think it's got to do with like the sponginess if you will in the mouse due to the additional joystick being the the bottom portion, the 3D portion if you will. Uh, that does getting used to. I have to kind of hold the mouse steady before I'm going to go for a definitive click because there are times when I click and it just doesn't recognize it and that I, it's like it's, I guess for lack of better terms, spongy. Uh, but you can re reprogram these to whatever you want them to be. You get your wheel scroll, which is interesting because this is actually the port. One of the complaints I have is because you can't actually program or it doesn't recognize the programming on the wheel scroll. Um, I've got an open case I've had open since February with uh, um, Alexa and for whatever reason they've decided that you know hey it's just really not that important we're not going to fix a couple of the features here one of which uh, a main issue uh, again lies in the fact that you cannot actually program <laughs> I mean it says you do but it doesn't recognize the programming for the wheel scroll and then the other portion that was really kind of interesting is your rotation left and right is backwards so whatever I want to program left it actuates it if I pro if I roll it right if I want something to be programmed in the roll right it actuates as a roll left which is annoying the way around it is you just reverse your programming shouldn't have to but there's something wrong or backwards in the access programming itself you can and then same thing you get your stick up and down that you can uh, program as you can see it's talking about or it's showing you a little demo right here and then you've got your ad uh, your advanced options which you can create a dead zone so that when you're using that you can have like you can make it very uh, pronounce that you have to really pull your jo joystick all the way back for it to recognize or push it all the way forward uh, and so on and so forth otherwise or you can make it so it's very sensitive so the only dead zone is if you just tap it it's in the middle so I kind of I found the spot that I prefer is probably around that 40 percent area for the programming of it you can program um, software switching for your profiles as well. It'll automatically recognize certain things. So right now I just, I'm gonna leave it on all software, not a big deal. Uh, I am going to program a couple things. I'm gonna open up the notepad so you can see what I'm talking about here with regards to you know, the accuracy or how it works. So right button first off, we're gonna leave the right click alone because you know, kind of need to use those, right? Right and left click for most situations. But I'm going to change the the uh, joist, or I'm sorry, the vertical scroll. We're going to have that become a um, a keyboard shortcut. So I want that to be. Oh, let's see here. We're just going to do a. We want it to be a letter A, just for the sake of showing this. Okay. So we're going to leave it as unique. You have progressive, key press, and held. Okay, we're going to validate that. We're going to apply. Wheel button. We're going to have that one be. Oh, we're going to program that to something else here. We're going to do that be a key one will be a B. And then vertical scroll down. Uh, joystick. We're going to go to keyboard shortcut 
Let's see. Apply. So here's the thing. Scroll up works. Middle, the mouse click and click works. Scroll C. Doesn't do anything. No recognition whatsoever if you do the scroll down using the program. Annoying as 80s. The Lexa button, you can program that to whatever you want to be. The reason why this is important is let's say I'm in a game and I want to switch, you know, from as opposed to switching weapons, and let's say I'm playing Overwatch, I want to have my scroll down to be a reload, my scroll up to be, um, I don't know, my my Q button, uh, the power activity. I, my brain's shot right now. I can't think of what the hell the thing's called. But, and I want it to be that. So for a quick activation, well, guess what? It doesn't work. You can't customize your scroll down. None of them seem to function. I believe it to be a firmware issue. I don't know that because Lexus, Lexus customer support, I don't know why I keep calling them Lexus. They do not have Lexus type of support. They have more like XM radio horrible customer support which if you've ever experienced XM radio product is awesome overpriced awesome but oh my god they've got the worst customer service in the world it's absolutely brutal them next to Adidas probably um, so that doesn't work so let's go over here and let's program the axis so I want my uh, my rotation left so I'm gonna rotate the mouse to the or the yeah the entire mouse base to the left I want that to be, we're just going to say that one is going to be a letter M. Again, purely for demonstration here. And I'm going to apply that. And I'm going to have the, um, I forgot, I had to fix one thing here. Rotation left is M, rotation right, so you, have to do, you do have to program them uh, uniquely. Rotation right will be an O. Validate, apply. Forward, backward. Okay, I'm going to say key one is going to be a P, and that's going to be forward. Backward is going to be an S. I'm going to hit validate and apply. Let's go over here. So, remember left was supposed to be, let's just pull this up here again to make sure I've got this correct, because I don't want to forget. Oh, well, left was supposed to be M. Right was supposed to be O. So we're going to validate again and apply. That's the other thing that happens is it will wipe out your program that you just did, which is really annoying. So I'm going to rotate this left. It's activating the rotate right. I'm going to rotate it right. It activates rotate left. Very annoying. Let's go back in here and... Uh, changing my DPI because it for whatever reason thinks that I wanted to do that there you go rotation forward backward keyboard shortcut so let's bring that up and I want forward to be s and backward to be T validate apply okay rotate forward Rotate forward does nothing. Rotate backward does nothing. The programming doesn't work. It's completely broken. And not just the mouse itself. I, mean, I haven't physically broken the mouse. It's the programming and or the firmware. So the entire purpose of this mouse is supposed to be these dual joysticks that don't function because the programming is jank. It just it doesn't work. So what happens is now I've this idea of being able to say, okay, I got this gaming mouse that I can program. One, my left and right axis are backwards and don't always work because now you can see it's not even working at all. I'm in here and none of the programming now works. Oh, we got a fail, fatal error. So now Lexip has crashed. So let's open it back up. Backwards, forward, okay, there we go. So now 
and it's really sensitive too. That's the other thing. So you can change that sensitivity forward back. That's supposed to be an O. This is supposed to be an M, but you know, they get it backwards. Scroll down still doesn't work. So that's, that's the problem. So now you've got some of the mouse that you have got dead zoned. It's sponging when you want to click certain things, it'll recognize other functions. And then sometimes the, the, the firmware, or I'm sorry, not the firmware, but the uh, control panel will just straight up quit. It's interesting because they also don't give you a, an option to simply update or check the update version of your firmware or software. They just, here you go, got to check it randomly and go on the website and get the, the uh, Lex control panel, see if there's an update for it. And by, to update it, you have to remove everything and manually do an update in the sense of reinstalling everything. But you know, I've never seen a firmware update, not since day one. Um, so it's very frustrating. And this is one of those things to get into a game and show you how great this thing is. It's just, it, it isn't worth it because basically all you've got is a wired mouse that has a sponginess to it due to the underneath portion of the, or the bottom portion of the joystick, the bottom joystick, the 3D Mac axis that doesn't work right, either at all or backwards. I don't know. For $130, I would have expected better support. Now, speaking of which, what I'm going to do is we're going to go back here and I'm just going to put things, ah, who cares? I'm going to un uninstall this anyway. You can tell how unexcited I am about this product. Um, I'm going to show you un the unfortunate scenario here of their customer support or lack thereof. I am going to go to the beginning. This is a screen recording here, obviously, but I, you have to chat with them via Skype. Uh, that's how their technical support works. Interesting in, its, uh, in and of itself. February 6th is when I opened my first my case with them and I told them, hey, look, this stuff isn't working right. Went through a couple of things because initially the install wasn't working. It wouldn't update the, uh, it wouldn't give me the correct, um, version or, or the firmware it wouldn't sell a software uh, or install the software correctly it was just jank once we got through all that and things finally working we got into the heart of the matter which is one wheel scroll down cannot be uh, programmed for a, a specific keyboard function roll right activates roll left roll left activates activates roll right again not the end of the world because I guess you could just go in and just programming uh, in reverse and then when you, you use it, you just can't rec you know, go, okay, roll life left is this because it's not. But then they said, okay, we're going to do this update. We'll get it out to you eventually. Uh, a new release will be launched in a couple of weeks. Now, by, mind you, this is back in February. They say it's an easy fix by the developer, but they don't have the ETA. You know, a little frustrating. I am fine at this point. Okay, I'm a little annoyed because it seems to be a long time, but now here comes June 28th. So we're talking four months later. And they still haven't fixed it at all. All they've done now at this point is ignored it. Well, I have your ticket number. I gave them the ticket number. Oh, guess what? This is the top of our to-do list, which it's not to done. In fact, I don't think they have a to-do list because now here we are in August. Now, six months later, uh, we'll give them the benefit. Five and a half months later because in, uh, what is it, 15 days, it'll be six months. It hasn't been fixed. And they don't seem to have any type of intention on fixing this, at least that I can tell. So what does this do for me as a consumer and as a reviewer? As a consumer, I'm pretty pissed because I can't use a damn mouse. It doesn't work right. Um, what does this do for me as a reviewer? It puts me in the position I'm in now where I gave them almost six months of time to fix this, fix software and or firmware. And they recognize that it's a problem. 
They say straight up, yeah, we know it. It's on our to-do list. We know about the problem. But here you are as a backer who paid, I want to say it was a hundred bucks or whatever it was, maybe 120 on Kickstarter. This is a couple of years ago, mind you. I completely forgotten I had even done this thing. I all of a sudden one day the packet shows up. I'm like, what is this? Oh, I forgot about this. Not good. I don't do Kickstarters anymore for a couple of reasons. This and there's another one called Kanoa. These were the Bluetooth headphones that they completely scammed you, stole your money, and this was from, I, I just, after that experience, I, I don't do them anymore. Anyway, so they've provided this support or lack thereof, and as, a, as someone who's trying to do tech review and is an enthusiast, this is really something that I'm going to warn you about, that this is not worth $130. If it worked, I don't know if I'd say it's worth $130, if it worked really well and you're a drafter, yeah, maybe because you're using it professionally, there could be a case use for it because maybe it really does improve your workflow, again, if it worked correctly and accurately. However, it doesn't. The mouse pad is not worth $40. It's a, frankly, a $15 item at best. I'll give them $15. And we'll say that, that's probably where it is, but it does nothing. It's a, more of an annoyance because of the fact uh, of the lack of... Uh, forethought into how to design it so that it doesn't catch on the cord every time you want to come across the middle which by the way I think is where most mice are kept by people that are using them it's just a big fail it is a spongy mouse the clicks are nice when you can hold them and and make the click but they don't also always get recognized you can click something several times and sometimes it just doesn't recognize it at all I mean it doesn't does nothing um, the forward back button, yeah, those those click nice. They they feel okay, a little close, but not the worst spot. The problem is again when you push push them, and part of the reason why they have the sensitivity for the um, 3D axis of it is that you you naturally have a little bit of sponge or give to the mouse right, left, back. So I kind of you know when I click on the back button, my hand seems to be naturally bringing the mouse on the 3D axis backward which then says, okay, if you got something programmed there, now you're gonna activate that if it worked. Or roll left might activate again, but since it's backwards, it'll actually activate roll right. You can, I'm sure you can tell I'm a little annoyed here. In the end, all I can tell you is don't back the project. Well, don't buy their product. It just straight up isn't worth it. The customer service has failed entirely. It's overpriced. Um, and it's very disappointing. I thought this thing had a lot of potential to it, but they just didn't do it right. I guess this, is the, this goes back to where a lot of reviewers make the suggestion and state, don't pre-order items. It's kind of like video games. Don't pre-order them. It, it, it's, a, it's a complete waste of money. All you're doing is saying, here's my money. You've not provided me with anything yet, but here's my money, and the hope is that maybe it might be good. Wait for something to come out read watch the reviews test something if you can get your hands on it physically and then make the purchase don't go out and pre-order something especially something like this from an unproven company that just straight up did a miserable job so even though this was a fail on the part of lexa i hope the video was not a fail so if you liked it you know what to do if you didn't like it you know what else to do hopefully it's not that hit that subscribe button and uh we'll see you in the next video have a good one